grace and peace and welcome this morning to worship here at Northminster Presbyterian Church. Thank you for your patience with us as we experience some technical issues. For those of you worshiping with us online, we're grateful for your patience and we're grateful for the opportunity to be united together across time and space and through technology to be able to worship God together this morning. As we continue our journey through Lent, our journey of following Jesus to the cross and growing closer together in following the pattern that Jesus set in serving others, we consider the idea of home today. What does home mean to you? I invite you to consider those things as we worship together this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. God, you are our refuge. You are the shore in sight. You are hands that reach out. You are the ground on which to rest. God, you are our strength. You are the life we long for. You are the refusal to give up. You are the keys of home we carry with us. God, you are our help in all times. We call to you from ruins or rubble, from times of trouble and times of plenty, from anywhere and everywhere. Hear our cries and our praise. Hear our prayers and our worship.
holy God for the empty tables that we didn't fill, for the arms that we have crossed in refusal, for the bridges that we didn't build, for the doors we have kept closed, for the roads that we have blocked, for the new life we have denied. Forgive us. God's abundant love and radical hospitality is ours, no matter what we have done or left undone. Our forgiveness through the power of Jesus Christ is sure, that we are reconciled to God and to one another, and God's promises remain unbroken. We celebrate our forgiveness through the peace we receive and the peace we share that is in Christ. God's beloved community is ours to build, to steward, and to share. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them. Hi, guys. Hi, Beth. I'm good to see you. It's been a while. I haven't been up here in a while, have I? Hi, Cersei and Erickson. Thank you so much. Get my finger wet real quick so I can make this page turn. Oh, can I beg a favor, Miss Chris? Would you grab my iPad and bring it to me, please? I left something at my thing, but I want to t ask you guys a couple of questions. What is it that makes a house? What is it when you have a house? What, what's around you? Thank you. Um, furniture. Furniture, yeah. Anything else? Could be bricks, yeah. Fire. You might have fire. Wood you, and a roof and wood. That's, having a roof is really good, isn't it? Keeps you dry, things like that. Has anybody ever lived in more than one house? No? You have not moved around yet? Uh, I, well, one of our parents um, was in the house that, that, that had a lot of people in it, but she moved. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when there's, there's so many people in the house that don't fit, you need to move, right? Somebody's going to yeah, change homes. An apartment. Like a hermit crab. An apartment. A hermit crab. That's right. So I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but the hermit crab carries its house around with it, right? And if it gets too small, it finds a new house, right? If it gets a new shell and, it, and the shell attaches to its back. The shell attaches to its back. Good guy. A high five. Distance high five, right? Okay. So um, I'm going to ask, I'll tell people here a couple of questions too, since I'll put you guys on the spot. Shall I put them on the spot a little bit? If you want to answer, answer. Um, has anybody ever actually sort of lived in a tent or a camper, maybe? We've got a tent, tent livers down here, tent livers over here, campers maybe, who knows? Um, has anybody ever felt at home when they were in a hotel, maybe visiting, or could be for work, maybe? I know I have on vacation. I make it my own. You know, it's going to have my stuff where I want it. And when I come back in the room before we go out to do something else, I know exactly where things are. I feel good in that place, right? Home's a place we feel good, right? Um, has anybody ever just lived in one house out here? Only, only one, okay? We saw movers here. Two houses, just two. More than five. More than ten. Okay, so some people move around a lot, right? I've, I've moved around a whole lot. When you move, does it feel like home right away? No. Anybody say yes? No. Yeah, it takes a little bit to make a house a home, right? Sometimes. I'm going to tell you a little story in a minute real quickly uh, at the end of this that it didn't take any time at all to know somewhere it was home. Um, and finally, what kind of things make it feel like home? Fire, cut, warmth, right? What other kinds of things make it feel like home? Uh, Anybody? Pictures, yes, sir. Dogs. Having your dogs and playing with them. And a bunny. And a bunny. Your pets. We we'll call them pets. Yes, them. 
shelter, having a nice warm place to stay and, and, and that. So obviously we can have more than one house. I'm gonna show you guys some pictures. Sorry, they're so small, it happens. So this picture, this picture shows three places I've lived. So there's a brick house and a house with yellow sides. This is actually inside an apartment. So I've been in an apartment a few times. There's different places you can live, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a good place. It's a good place when you're in between to do things. So, you know, some people are in apartments for quite a while and that's cool. My sister still lives in an apartment. Um, this one is some big places that I consider home, even though I never actually lived them and they were never my address. I have, this first one is a house from the 1830s and it's an old family home that was in my family in Texas a long time ago. This is a house that my daughter lived in that I was in a lot, so I've considered that a home. This is the camp where my kids grew up, where they put where church camp that they went to called Camp Buck. And this cabin, our church adopted. And when they adopted it, we made it our special place. We fixed it up. Is it back? Is it back? I really don't know the answer to that question. I, I assume that it is, but I don't really know. But it was a very cool place and it was a home. It was definitely a home for us. Um, another thing that makes families home is people, right? People and, and pets and pictures and other things around you. So there's family in here, there's friends. The My son was very at home in band at school. He loved band, he loved school, our pet. We had this pet for 15 months and that's on our fireplace and that's at my, my husband's sister's house. So family and friends, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's right. And then this one is another kind of home. Hey, that's, that. that's our church. That is our church, very good, right? I'll just show you that. In fact, right here. So we're over here, right? So I wanted to say this about church because Church is as big a home for me, at least, and I know for a lot of people in this room, as any other home I've ever lived. And I will tell you right now that the first moment I walked in this church, someone came up to me and smiled at me and made me feel welcome, and I felt at home, and I knew immediately that this was my new church home, that I was going to be here. Huh? Yes, I was, oh, you don't know. I was like, yay, this is great. That's exactly what I said. It was wonderful. Finally, I want to remind you one last thing. And this is at the church camp that I was telling you about. And that is that God surrounds us with what we need to, be, to make home. It's a beautiful lake. He surrounds us with family and friends, but most of all, love. Is there a camp over there? It is a camp. It's actually a, a sanctuary. It's a little circle with a cross. Is it so sad? Well, yeah, I can make it bigger. The cross. Yeah, there's a cross there. Yeah. So just remember that outside, inside, if you're surrounded by family and friends, and you're always surrounded by God's love, and he's going to help you feel at home, okay? So can you say a prayer with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Dear Lord, Dear Lord thank, you thank you for blessing me with a wonderful home, a wonderful home. and a loving family. At home, at home, at school, school at church, church, in all the world around me. Around me. I, love you. I love you. Amen.
gosh, that is beautiful. For, if you didn't catch that, Nathan wrote that. Thank you, Nathan, and thank you, choir. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, the first seven verses. Hear these words of Jesus to his closest friends. Don't let your hearts be troubled. If you have faith in God, have faith in me as well. In God's house, there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you, and then I will come back to take you with me, that where I am, you may be as well. You know the way that leads to where I am going. Thomas replied, but we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I myself am the way. I am the truth, and I am life. No one comes to Abba God but through me. If you really knew me, you would know the God I call Abba Father also. From this point on, you know God, and you have seen God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, the Holy Spirit has some interesting timing, let me tell you. We have sung about building. We have heard beautiful words in the gorgeous anthem that Nathan composed and our choir sung about dwelling places. In the last week, home has been a near constant focus for me personally. As the roof over our office and fellowship hall building was worked on and repaired, we found out late that there was a very small family of squirrels that were living there, and the roof repair made it so that those baby squirrels had to be relocated to another place. All week long, Andrew and I, together with Andrew's parents, have been doing some significant renovations to our home, to our kitchen and our dining room, so there's everything has a very, maybe not so thin, layer of drywall dust. Heartbreaking decisions were made this week in the hopes of widening our circle of welcome here on our campus and as a prayer that a good friend of ours would get the support and healing he seems to so dearly need. According to Amnesty International, there are an estimated 25.9 million refugees, people without homes in the world right now. Half of that number are children. One point million of those refugees are from Ukraine. 2.6 million are from Afghanistan, while there are another 3.5 million Afghans who have been displaced within their own country. Various reports I read estimated that in America, there are 552,830 people experiencing homelessness right now. 9,280 of those are in North Carolina, and roughly 325 are right here in Hickory. So nests, kitchens, dwelling places, houses. I don't think that's what Jesus was talking about. Jesus was talking about home. In God's house, in God's beloved community, there are many nests and kitchens and rooms and mansions and places to rest and places to dwell, Jesus says. And Jesus tells his best friends, and through their records, Jesus tells us that he prepares all of those places for us. What Jesus is preparing is home. It's tempting to get confused about home. We're inclined to think home is physical, that it's an address or a time. Well, spoiler alert, it's not. In the Torah, Moses and God's people, Israel, understood the tabernacle to be God's dwelling place. Wherever God's presence dwelled was supremely important. 
when the people of God needed to move, they figured out a way to take God's presence with them through the Ark of the Covenant. God sends Jesus, fully human and fully divine, to dwell among us. After Jesus' resurrection and ascension, the Holy Spirit finds her dwelling place in all of those who bear God's image. Home. A quick Google search will provide you with a very, very, very long list of songs that are written about home. Philip Phillips sings a song that says, I'm going to make this place your home. John Denver sings, take me home. Country roads, there we go. One of my favorites is written by Edward Sharp and performed by Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros. Home is wherever I'm with you. When I think of home, I know that I don't have a home without Andrew and that there are other members of my chosen family that make up my home. Home is a person, a relationship, a family, a tribe. But yet we've still got home pegged as a noun, as a person or a place or a thing. And that certainly draws the circle wider, but even a noun is too narrow an understanding of the home that Jesus is trying to teach us. In just seven verses, Jesus paints a wonderful picture of home, God's house, many rooms, a prepared place, a prepared way to get there, a trusted guide, not being left alone to find our own way, all leading back to full reunion with Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. When we read through those seven verses, we get to John 14, 6. That's a verse that's often used for exclusion. People proof text that verse to build up walls and define who's in and who's out. There's a study out there that claims that John 14, 6 is the most often used verse to persecute, persecute those who are not Christian. Friends, God is too big for that. God's abundant love and radical hospitality does not have the space for exclusion. Jesus isn't talking about exclusion. Jesus is talking about home, about God's beloved community and the way we steward that beloved community right here and right now. Jesus is the way and the truth and life. No one is home without those three things. The only way that we know home is through Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Home is the truly unconditional and abundant love of God that's expressed in radical hospitality. And the only way home is through the ways of Jesus and the truth of Jesus and the life of Jesus. It's not our job to twist Jesus' words into exclusion or oppression or guilt or shame. It's our job to follow Jesus' patterns as we follow the way. It's our job to read and learn Jesus' truth through the words that he speaks and the actions that he takes and the relationships that he fosters. It's our job to steward the life we've been given through the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. A love that no thing can ever separate us from. Knowing that truth doesn't mean that we give up on making home for others. It doesn't mean that we don't work to end homelessness or to better steward creation. It doesn't mean that we can limit our welcome, quite the opposite. Because we work the way and the truth and the life of Jesus, that empowers us to soldier on in the beloved community building work that we are called to. When we live Jesus' way and Jesus' truth and Jesus' life, we're working for justice. We're feeding the hungry. We're redefining family. And we're setting the table for a truly crowded fellowship. Home is an attitude. It's a way of living. Home is the circle widening, the oppression liberating, the radical hospitality welcoming way of following Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit, God sings to us, home is wherever I'm with you. 
and invites us to sing right back. So may we take home with us wherever we go. May we create home in our midst wherever and whenever we are. May we live the way and the truth and the life of Jesus and celebrate our home with God and with all creation. May this be so. Amen. Truly, we are grateful and thankful for all of the many things that are going on in the life of our congregation. As you'll recall, last week we were invited in our partnership in ministry with uh, the Family Care Center to collect a few things. If you have brought those things, you're welcome to leave them in the narthex. You can find a time during the week to um, make an appointment to stop by and drop those off. And you'll hear in a little bit about another ministry partnership and some ways that you can get involved. We're also thrilled and very grateful for Julie and the beloved community crafters that have done great work preparing cards. You saw that announcement on your screen at the beginning of the worship service, and you'll see it again at the end. Those cards that are being made and prepared are for children who are in foster care, and there are cards to celebrate their birthdays and celebrate all kinds of things. And I believe at last I heard we had 200 and... 25 cards collected and are grateful, Julie, for your leadership and for the work of the crafters that have made that possible to share God's love. This week, our uh, Lenten midweek prayer services will continue from 5 to 5.15. You're invited to join us if the weather is nice enough out in the breezeway where we come together and share in a moment of prayer and just stopping ourselves in the middle of the week to pray with and for one another and to share our joys and concerns and our prayer requests. We're always grateful if you can join us in person. However, if you're not able to, I invite you to just find 15 other minutes somewhere in the midst of your week to set aside for a time of prayer, to connect with God, to pray for all of those that are prayers that are on your heart, and to know that your church family is praying for you as well. Our prayers are one of our greatest offerings, and there are lots of other ways that we make offerings as well. And with God, when we bring all of those offerings together, they are always more than the sum of their parts. So prayers are great offerings, and we also are greatly appreciative of the sharing and offering of talent and time, of the offering of relationships, and the offering of finances and resources. Finances and resources that make their way to us can be done in a variety of ways. If you're here in the sanctuary, you can drop your uh, offering in an offering plate on your way out from the building, or you can also make arrangements to mail checks to the church or contact Sophia, our office manager, during the week, who'd be happy to help you. Those offerings make a difference, and they allow us to continue our mission and ministry. And we are grateful for all of the offerings, whether they be finances and resources, time and talent, skills or prayer, or our very lives. want to invite Janet to come forward and tell us a little bit about this week's ministry partner for our Lenten journey of service. Good morning. Okay, the ministry for this week is Strong Life Rescue Mission. And I'm just going to read what's on their website. These are not my words. <laughs> the Strong Life Rescue Mission is dedicated to serve individuals who are homeless in the Catawba County area. Our clients can find a restored life in the freedom and love of Christ. We believe relief. We provide relief by meeting immediate physical needs and connect clients to the community resources to help them navigate their crisis. The men's transitional program provides an opportunity for those who have been oppressed by poverty to learn to live independently. 
This live-in program would focus on the participants' spiritual walk, employment, financial planning, and long-term goals. And this is a quote uh, from John Hayes, who is um, the pastor at Strong Life. To see someone get a job who has been looking so hard for one, to have an addict come to you and admit for the first time they have a problem and need help, see a, a man purchase transportation when he hasn't had an independent weight of traveling for years, that's how we measure success. Mostly we use... Mostly for us, though, Strong Life Ministries is helping people in difficult times of life that could happen to any of us realize God still loves them. To help them realize that there are many, even strangers, willing to show much love all around our area. A list of the uh, things that they could use for their ministry are AAA batteries, Bathroom cleaner, washcloths, cases of water, paper towels, trial size lotions, disposable razors, coffee creamer, uh, mopping solution, and Vienna sausages and beanie wings. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. The list of the things that we're collecting for them is available on. Uh, the email that you received this morning, and it'll be in our congregational email as well. And we'll have a collection box again in the narthex next week, as well as in the office throughout the week. We're grateful for all of the ways that we're invited to partner in service, following the plan, following the way of Jesus that was set before us. And just as our offerings of finances and resources and relationships and time make a difference, the offering of our prayers make a difference. So I invite you to join me for a moment of silence before we join together in offering our prayers to God. And in that silence, I invite you to gather your thoughts and your hearts and lift your prayers to God, knowing that God hears them and receives them in whatever form they may take. Let us pray. Holy God, when we struggle to understand home, when we feel as though we have been pulled too far or stretched too thin, we ask that you would comfort us. Remind us that your abundant love and your radical hospitality is ours no matter what. Hear the prayers that we offer, God, the prayers that are on our hearts, the prayers that we have known throughout the week, and the prayers that are known only to you. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who are in need of peace, for those whose lives have been marked by violence or by oppression. God, we pray for those who have been charged with leadership, for those who make decisions that impact the lives of others, those who lead, those who teach, those who govern, and truly all of us. For those who are in need of healing, whether that is a healing of mind or of body or of spirit or of circumstance. For all of the prayers that we know and for all of the prayers that are unknown, O oh God, we lift them to you. And we ask that you would take them and hold them, that you would send your spirit of peace to remind us of the home that you have prepared for us. To remind us of the home that you have charged us to create for one another. O oh God, in all things, we sense the peace and presence and strength of your spirit. We ask that that presence nourish us and strengthen us so that we can be strength and nourishment and welcome for others. We pray all of these things just as we join our voices to pray for the sake of the world. And we do so the best way we know how using the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you go from this place to wherever you may go, may the words of the beautiful choral anthem we heard be on your hearts. God is our dwelling place, and let us allow ourselves to be a dwelling place for God as well. As you go, know that you are blessed and that you are a blessing. May joy and nothing less find you and surround you wherever you may go. And may the God who sings, home is wherever I'm with you, guide you and strengthen you and rest assured knowing that God will always lead you safely home. Let us go together in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>